All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So on behalf of the Environmental Finance Center Network, Welcome to another session in our operator certification webinar series on chlorine dosage, disinfection math, and breakpoint chlorination. My name is Avery Davis, and I'm from the Syracuse University Environmental Finance Center. And before we begin, I'm going to cover a few housekeeping items, and then we'll jump into today's presentation. During the webinar today, everyone will be kept on mute to ensure audio quality. If you have a question, please type it into the GoToWebinar question dialog box anytime throughout the session. We'll be saving your questions for a facilitated Q&A session at the end of the presentation. After the webinar, you will receive a follow-up email that includes a link to the recording and other information you may need. You can also download the slides from today in the Handouts tab in your GoToWebinar control panel. This webinar has not been submitted for pre-approval of continuing education credits, but eligible attendees will receive a certificate of attendance for their personal record. To receive a certificate for this session, you must attend for the entire webinar and register and attend individually using your real name and unique email address. Group viewing credit will not be accepted. Certificates can be, will be sent via email within 30 days of the webinar date. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please contact us at smallsystems at syr.edu. Now for a little bit about the Environmental Finance Center Network. We provide training and technical assistance to small water and wastewater systems in all U.S. states and territories. If your community or utility needs assistance with drinking water or wastewater system management, please feel free to contact us through our request form, which I will be sharing shortly in the chat. And on that note, I would like to introduce our speaker for today. So joining me is AJ Barney, who is a research engineer at the Southwest Environmental Finance Center at the University of New Mexico. So welcome AJ, and I'm gonna hand everything over to you. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> So as um, Avery mentioned, um, my name is AJ. I'm a research engineer with the Southwest Environmental Finance Center of the University of New Mexico. Um, I am a civil engineer and a biologist who has worked in wastewater for over 10 years. Um, I am a New Mexico wastewater level operator, certification level four. And I previously worked for the Albuquerque Water Authority as a plant operator and in compliance. Um, and then I also, and then I've worked with the Southwest EFC since last year. So uh, as was mentioned today, we're gonna to be talking about chlorine dosage math, breakpoint chlorination, and a couple of other disinfection math concepts. This webinar is gonna be a little different than some of our other ones because we'll be walking through a lot of math problems, and then I'm gonna have you guys solve those uh, similar problems. I would recommend having a pencil, some paper, and then also a calculator that you're comfortable with. So with that being said, um, I'd also like to mention that we are currently promoting a new uh, EFCN uh, program available to uh, communities. Uh, so the Southwest Environmental Financer is currently offering new technical assistance opportunities covering aspects of wastewater pretreatment. And if your community or municipality is in need of assistance with their pro uh, FOG program, implementing the EPA dental rule, industrial sampling, or other aspects typically covered by pretreatment programs, we'd be delighted if you contacted us. Uh, you can uh, email me directly or uh, contact us at the uh, Get Help link. So a quick overview of uh, the operator certification process. Um, operator certifications are typically overseen by state environmental departments. Uh, some examples from EPA Region 6 are the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality, the New Mexico Environmental Department, and the Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, there is also EPA Operator Certification, which is designed to have reciprocity with state levels and is utilized by communities such as tribes. Uh, each of these agencies has their own level hierarchy based on different uh, criteria that the certification may serve such as complexity of the system, population size of certification can co cover, 
and years of experience required to operate the plant. There are various resources each of these states offers, such as need to know criteria for their exams, study guides, and then there's also the California State University of Sacramento Wastewater Operation Manual, uh, which is kind of the go-to study manual for many operators in wastewater treatment plants. Uh, it's important to become familiar with the resources provided by your state, especially any information that may be on the exam, um, for what may be on the exam. And this webinar series is a great overview for many of the topics we cover, but the best strategy for passing your examination is to learn what is on your exam and studying those topics in depth. Uh, it is very hard to cover in detail all the typical um, information that's on there, uh, but we recommend noting what we cover and then also for this type of one, noting like the formulas and how you would use them. And we're gonna provide some practice problems, but it's good to go out and look for other practice problems that you can apply uh, the formulas on your formula sheet too. So uh, a quick overview of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, we are going to talk about some important math terms that you need to know for disinfection math. Uh, we're gonna also begin talking about chlorine disinfection. Um, this will include chlorine chemistry, uh, chlorine dosages, uh, chlorine loading, and then also breakpoint chlorination. Uh, we'll touch on a little bit of uh, ozone math and then also uh, ultraviolet radiation math, which is another form of disinfection. So uh, some important terms to understand. Um, first, we're gonna wanna talk about concentrations. Uh, this is typically represents as milligrams per liter, and a milligram per liter is also equal to uh, one part per million uh, or one ppm. Uh, another concept that we typically get into is million gallons per day, um, and this is important because it's so that we use to convert, especially with our ppms, and it can be represented as an MGD or as 10 to the sixth, which is a million gallons uh, over days as a fraction. Uh, I'd also like to note that 1% is equal to 10,000 milligrams per liter, uh, which is a concept that also comes up for concentrations and um, uh, math problems with more milligrams per liter. So just a quick overview, uh, we'll talk about what uh, is chlorine disinfection. And chlorine disinfection is the destruction of all pathogenic microorganisms using chlorine gas, powder, or liquid bleach. And it's not always just uh, powder, it can also be pellets um, and other solid forms of chlorine. So the goal of disinfection is to remove all disease-causing pathogens before the effluent is discharged into receiving waters. Uh, this helps prevent the spread of disease by protecting public water supplies, irrigation waters, receiving waters for recreational uses, and shellfish growing areas, basically in the area that um, humans are going to come in contact with and spend time in. Um, disinfection differs from sterilization because sterilization is the destruction of all microorganisms. Uh, it's a complete eradication of them, but it's often impractical. So our goal is disinfection just to remove pathogens that can cause disease and sickness. So uh, here's a little bit of uh, chlorine chemistry. So chlorine is typically applied to wastewater as free chlorine, hypochlorite, or as chlorine dioxide. Uh, free chlorine will typically be in the form of uh, gas um, or liquid, and then hypochlorite is in the form of um, a liquid or a solid, and then uh, chlorine dioxide is also a liquid. Um, sorry, my notes are a little, are missing, so I wanted to check on this. Um, uh, so chlorine gas uh, is a little more effective because it readily produces um, hypochlorous acid for disinfection and hydrochloric acid. Um, and that differs from the sodium um, hypochlorite, which will disassociate to also hypochlorous acid, but also the hypochlorous oxide, um, I'm sorry, hypochlorous ion, um, which is a less effective uh, disinfectant than hypochlorous acid um, and is more readily um, available at higher pHs. Um, and then chlorine dioxide is more effective at even higher pHs of around 10. 
So liquid bleach or sodium hypochlorite can be generated on site typically um, at a wastewater treatment or water treatment site. Uh, so brine is created by combining uh, water and salt. Brine is a concentrated salt solution and then it's ran through an electrical cell. So you can see here, we have the chemical formula for salt, which is Na, that's sodium, and then Cl is chloride, and that's added to the water. And then 2E is the addition of electricity, um, which is when it's ran through the electric cell, which, release it, which produces our sodium hypochloride and our hydrogen. Um, and this is typically off-gassed. So, uh, for our chlorine chemistry, uh, chloramines are a weaker disinfectant than hypochlorous acid, which are much longer lasting and formerly in the process of ammonia. Um, ammonia is present in all wastewater. So this chemistry um, always occurs in wastewater when hypochlorous acid is added. <clears throat> and these are important for um, understanding our chlorine residual. And there are three different forms of our chloramines. There are our monochloramines, our dichloramines, and our trichloramines. Um, monochloramines are formed at higher pHs. Um, dichloramines um, exist at um, kind of neutral to lower pH, and trichloramines um, exist at a pH of four or less. At typical wastewater levels, um, you mostly see monochloramines and dichloramines. Um, and that's typical pH levels for wastewater, which is around seven. So uh, let's talk about our chlorine requirements. Um, you have three different concepts. We have our chlorine dosage, our chlorine demand, and our chlorine residual. Our chlorine dosage is the amount of chlorine added to the water. And that's calculated by dividing the chlorine feed by the, the flow or volume of water that you're treating. Our chlorine dosage Dosage is typically the easiest to quantify because feed rates are controlled by operation staff and how much chlorine they use during treatment. The amount of chlorine added is derived from the weight of gas or powder volume or the volume of liquid, liquid bleach used during a disinfection. Uh, for chlorine demand, that's the amount of chlorine required to act with all the reactive substances in the flow. And chlorine demand is basically the amount of dosage that is used up during treatment. It is not directly measured, uh, like the dosage or residual, and must be calculated from the other two. Our chlorine residual is the remaining chlorine in the water after demand has been satisfied. Um, and that is measured after treatment and measures what is left over after the chlorine demand is used up. The required residual is typically dictated by the treatment plant's MPDS permit and designed to remove a certain percentage of coliform bacteria and ensure that that bacterial removal is met. So um, here's a couple of our first equations. Um, and this is basically the first equation, but reworked. So chlorine dosage is equal to the chlorine demand plus the chlorine residual. And that can also be uh, reordered by subtracting uh, the chlorine demand from both sides. And then the chlorine residual will equal the chlorine dosage minus the demand. Um, if you remember one of these two or of either of your formula sheets, you can rearrange the terms pretty easily uh, with basic arithmetic to calculate the residual dosage or demand depending on what information is available. So the residual is composed of free chlorine and the combined chlorine, which is our uh, chloramines that we spoke about. And the free chlorine is just unreacted chlorine that reacts with water to form hypochlorous and hypochloric acid. And then, uh, like I said before, the combined chlorine is in the presence of ammonia, um, hypochloric will form chloramines. And then there's other um, organic compounds in there that they can form um, organic chlorine compounds. Um, also, the chlorine residual is made up of free chlorine that does not already say that. Sorry. Um, let's see. So, uh, first, what we're going to do is we're going to do a dosage practice problem. Uh, so we're just going to use one of our equations that we used before. Um, so we have our chlorine dosage is equal to our chlorine demand plus our chlorine residual. And this will be our first poll question. So we're going to determine the chlorine demand of a treated wastewater effluent if the chlorine dosage used for disinfection is 8 milligrams per liter and the chlorine residual is 1.3 milligrams per liter. So you want to take out your pen and pencil um, and go ahead and solve the problem. And then we're going to throw up the poll question in just about 
30 seconds to a minute. All right, I think it's time we should throw out the poll uh, question and see how we did on this one. Okay, we have four answers. So we have, um, the first answer is 9.3 milligrams per liter. The second one is 6.5 minutes. The third is 1.3 milligrams per liter. And then the last uh, option is 6.7 milligrams per liter. It looks like about 65% have voted. Um, I just want to emphasize that if you get these answers wrong, that's okay. You're not going to be penalized, but it's just helpful to um, test your knowledge and, and practice. So I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. There are your results, if you can see those, AJ. Yes, I can. So it looks like uh, most of us got the correct answer, which is 6.7 milligrams per liter. Um, it looks like a couple of people answered 6.7 minutes. Um, so it's possible that we solved it correctly. We just didn't uh, see the correct units. And the first answer uh, is 9.3 milligrams per liter. So you might have added the chlorine dosage plus the residual. And the third one is 1.3 milligrams per liter. So you might have just put the chlorine residual as the answer. Um, but here is, if you want to, yes. And so here is the answer to our problem. Um, so as you can see, we rearranged the problem. Um, so we put the chlorine demand, we isolated it by itself and we subtracted the chlorine residual from both sides. Um, so that results in subtracting 1.3 milligrams per liter from eight milligrams per liter. And our result is 6.7 milligrams per liter. So our next concept is going to be solution strength. So typical solution strength for liquid bleach is 3 to 12% available chlorine. And HTH, which is our solid form, is 65 to 70% available chlorine. Uh, the way that we solve for our solution strength is we can multiply, um, if we have it in decimal form, by 100%. We can equal our solution strength as a percentage, or if we want to represent it as a decimal and we're given the solution strength as a percentage, um, like we see on top uh, for our examples, we would divide that solution strength by 100% and we would get a decimal form of um, our solution strength. And this is important because gas chlorine is considered you know, 100%, but these other forms you may need to use um, a decimal or the percentage to solve for uh, the available chlorine that's actually in the solution. So uh, for first, we're going to go over a sample problem. So I'm going to solve this guy uh, for you guys. Uh, and we're going to walk through the strategy that I use to solve for problems like this, because we are going to see a lot of word problems in our wastewater certification tests. So the first question is, your wastewater treatment plant uses a 4% solution to disinfect treated wastewater. And the question is, what is the strength of the solution expressed as a decimal? So first, we're going to see that we um, know which equation we're gonna use, which is we wanna find it as a decimal. So we're gonna use our um, decimal equation. And the first thing we do is identify our givens. So it told us that there's a solution strength of 4%. So we're gonna identify that 
And if you're following along, it's good to write those givens. Uh, you can write it just as it's seen on the screen as givens and then solution strength equals 4%. Then we want to do is we want to set up our equation. So all we do for that is we plug in those givens into the equation that we have and our solution strength as a decimal will equal 4% divided by 100%. Then it's time to solve the problem. The first part of solving is we want to cancel our units and we also have a webinar video um, available, an educational video on our website if anyone's interested in um, more in depth on unit conversions. But essentially what we're gonna do is when we set up an equation and we have our terms uh, set up as fractions, we wanna make sure that we have top and bottom frac um, units that match. And in this case, it's our percentage signs. And so we cancel those out. So four divided by 100 will equal 0.04. So now I'm going to throw up a practice problem uh, that's uh, just the same as this, and we're going to have you guys solve it. So the practice problem is your wastewater treatment plant has decided to increase the strength of their chlorine solution to 8.5% to reduce the energy required for disinfection treatment. What is the strength of this solution expressed as a decimal? So I want you guys to go ahead and work this problem. Um, in the same uh, strategy that we used before, and then we'll throw up the poll question probably in about 30 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and put up the poll question and we'll see how we do. Um, the answers available are 0 0.04, 0 Give the pull up for a few more seconds and close it in three, two, one. And there are your results, AJ. Awesome. It looks like most of us got it correct. Um, the answer is 0.085. Uh, it looks like a small number answered 0.85. And if that's the case, you might have used. Um, the wrong decimal point or um, divided by maybe 10 instead of 100. So I'm going to go ahead and put up the answer. So as you can see here, we just did it the same as the previous problem. We divided that 8.5% divided by 100% and came to our answer 0.085. So this is how it should look on your guys' uh, solution. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next problem, or our next formulas, I'm sorry. Uh, this is going to be our chlorine dosage problems. So chlorine dosage is typically represented by that concentration that we talked about, milligrams per liter. And our chlorine dosage is gonna be equal to our chlorine feed divided by our flow multiplied by our conversion factor, which is 8.34 gallons per pound. And this is how we convert any pounds to gallons. Um, another form of this equation is if we use one of those uh, different forms of chlorine. So the first one will be for chlorine gas, and the other one will be for liquid chlorine or solid chlorine, um, the powder or pellet form. And what we do is we add a solution strength term to it. So the chlorine dosage for those would be chlorine feed times our chlorine solution strength as a decimal 
and that would be divided by the flow and our conversion factor. So let's go ahead and uh, do a sample problem. So our chlorine, um, the question that we're gonna go over is a chlorinator is set to feed 417 pounds a day of 12% chlorine bleach to treat a flow of two MGD. So what will the resulting chlorine dosage in milligrams per liter be? And we're gonna go ahead and solve this um, step by step again. So the first thing we do is we set up our givens. So we're gonna have our chlorine feed. Um, that's the first given is 417 pounds a day. Uh, the strength of our solution is 12% and the flow that we're treating is two MGD. Next, we're gonna set up our equation by just plugging in those givens. So if you remember, um, first we have to solve for solution strength, which is give you our 12% divided by our 100%. And that gives us a decimal of 0.12. So we plug that in for our chlorine solution strength. Then we plug again our chlorine feed and our uh, flow. And I went ahead and put this as million gallons per day to show how to cancel out those units. So, as you can see here, um, we cancel out our units. Uh, the pounds is on the very top of our fraction and our 8.34 is in the same position. So those cancel out. Uh, day is on the, bo is the bottom fraction of our top term and day is also in the flow term at the bottom of that fraction. So those cancel out. Um, on the bottom, we have gallons on the top of our first term and gallons on the top of our second term. So those cancel out. So we're still left with the million part of it. And if you remember um, that we can enter that in as parts per million. So when we do, when we enter this into our calculator, we get approximately three, or I think it's exactly three. And that's gonna be three per million. So three parts per million. If you guys remember our concentration, uh, parts per million is equal to milligrams per liter. Okay, so now that we ran through that problem, we're gonna do another practice problem and we will have you guys solve it. So the problem reads, a change in operations requires the minimum chlorine dosage to be increased to 3.5 milligrams per liter. Plant management has decided to increase the feed rate from 417 pounds a day to 500 pounds a day. Will this increase allow the plant to meet the minimum dosing requirement? And so we still have our same previous givens of 12% for our chlorine strength and our flow of 2 MGD. So we're going to go ahead and solve uh, for this one. We're going to have you guys solve it. Uh, we're going to do a little more time now. We're going to do two minutes, um, and then we will throw up the poll question.
All right, I think it's about time we put up with the poll question. Okay, this was a pretty simple one. It's just gonna be yes or no based on um, the question that we asked. Will this increase allow the plant to meet the minimum dosing requirement? Right, it looks like about 66% have voted, but I don't see that number increasing. So please get those answers in. And then I'm gonna close the poll in about three, two, one. And there All right. it is. So it looks like most of us got it correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and show the solution. So, um, as you can see, we use the same equation as before. And the only thing that really changed is our feed. So instead of being 417 pounds per day, it's 500 pounds per day, as we can see right here um, on the coin dosage equation. And then we just multiply that math and cancel our units. And the answer is 3.597 milligrams per liter or 3.6 milligrams per liter. And that's greater than the minimum dosage that we wanted to increase to, the 3.5. So yes, this feed rate that the plant management has decided to run will achieve the dosing requirements. So other forms of these equations are that the chlorine feed um, is equal to our chlorine dosage times our flow times our 8.34. So that's really just a rearrangement where the flow and the unit conversion were on the other side of the equation, um, but they were divided. So if we multiply both sides, we get these equations that we have here. Um, and the other form is if we include our chlorine solution strength for the second one. Uh, so I recommend writing these down uh, because at the end of the lesson, we are gonna utilize a problem uh, that it's gonna have these formulas. So I'm gonna leave this up for about uh, 20, 30 seconds. Okay, so that's it for our dosage math. So now we're going to talk about breakpoint chlorination. Um, so breakpoint chlorination is the process that we talked about, um, or it involves the chloramines that we talked about. So it is a phenomenon that occurs for all wastewater that's treated for chlorine, because at some point, uh, all the chlorine being added to the wastewater uh, there's no chlorine residual and that's when our chlorine is being destroyed and it's oxidizing all oxidizable material um, and it's reacting with everything there's only like the chlorine ion available and so there's no residual that we're going to see then at a certain point where all those uh, reducing compounds are used up um, for our dosage uh, we start to form our chloroorganic or chloramine compounds so those are our monochloramines, our dichloramines, and trichloramines. And so all the, all the uh, oxidizable materials used up, um, so we're gonna have a combined, um, our combined residual will increase at this point, and that is mostly just uh, the formation of the chloramines um, and then some organic compounds. And it increases until it reaches the peak of our curve, which um, is at point B, and at point B, the mole ratio of chlorine to ammonia is one to one. Now, if you increase that, um, the chloramines and organic compounds are, are begin to be destroyed, and they are, um, and so you start to see a reduction of the 
residual. Um, and this is because those compounds are again being created are turned into a chlorine ion. And so that residual will begin to drop until it reaches a certain point um, where anything added to the wastewater um, is only our free chlorine. And that's at point C. So you'll still have some combined residual, but most of it has been destroyed and um, exists as a chlorine ion now. And all additional chlorine that's added to the solution uh, will be our free residual. So um, some typical types of questions that you might run into on your exam is just kind of understanding what's happening at each point. Uh, you know, you might be asked, you know, at what point um, is, uh, you know, at what point is, um, you know, does the residual start to be created and stuff like that. So it's good for this, uh, for our breakpoint curves, to always kind of understand what's happening at each different point in the curve. Um, and so to do that, we're going to, to practice that, we're going to have um, a breakpoint coordination um, practice problem. And we're going to, there's actually going to be two equations, uh, two questions. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is, um, and it's going to be a poll question, is at what point is the combined residual the highest? So uh, this one doesn't have the same kind of uh, information available on it, but we're going to put up the poll question and have you guys answer based on what we just talked about. So uh, the available options are A, B, C, or D. And at what point is the combined residual the highest? All right, I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. All right, so it looks like most of us got the correct answer. Um, so as we talked about, uh, we want to know what point is the combined residual the highest. And if you remember, that's where we're creating those chloramines and chlororganic points which is when the initial curve is increasing. And that increases until point B. And then after that, that combined residual begins to decline until it reaches like a steady minimum. So point B is gonna be the answer to our first question. So we'll go back to this one. So our second question is, what is the approximate free chlorine residual at point D? Okay, so um, we're gonna leave this up just for about 20, 30, 30 seconds so you can look at it and get an idea of uh, when is the free chlorine residual at point D. And then we'll put up the poll question and then talk about the answer. Okay, let's go ahead and put up the poll question. And so our uh, possible answers are four milligrams per liter, 17 milligrams per liter, five milligrams per liter, and one milligram per liter.
We're going to close the poll in three, two, one. And there you go, AJ. All right. Okay, so um, most of us put five milligrams per liter, um, but the correct answer, answer is actually four milligrams per liter. And the reason this is, is if you remember um, at point C, that's kind of when we reach our minimum residual uh, chlorine. And you can see from here um, at point C, uh, below that it shows that there's the combined residual on the bottom right of the graph. Um, so there's still a combined residual in there. It's just kind of at a minimum. And then point D, if you look at the graph, that's about equal to five. So that's gonna be our total residual is equal to five. And so in order to get our free residual, we subtract our combined from our total. So five milligrams per liter minus the one milligram per liter. So the point at D, the five milligrams per liter, minus the point at C is gonna equal everything um, in between, which you can see on this graph, it shows um, on the right where it shows free residual, the line from C out, uh, you know, from about seven milligrams to 10 milligrams per liter, um, it's the same concept. So everything above that is our free residual. All right. So um, we're gonna move on from breakpoint chlorination and we're gonna talk about dechlorination. Uh, so just real quick, uh, typically uh, dechlorinization can be uh, utilized by a, new, a variety of things, um, time, uh, light, um, oxygen, but a common usage is sulfur dioxide uh, is used to treat uh, or to dechlorinate treated wastewater. Uh, and the reason is that sulfur dioxide has a similar molecular weight to chlorine and can be used at almost a one-to-one -one ratio for dechlorination. Um, often a safety factor is utilized in this to make sure that all the chlorine is reacted with um, and sulfur dioxide at these low concentrations is relatively safe. Uh, the recommended safety factor uh, is 3.0 milligrams per liter, and that's also the that's often the initial usage for a sulfonator setting. Um, and then, as do, as dosing is um, becomes more familiar, uh, this is reduced. So we're going to go over a sulfur loading uh, slash feed rate practice problem. Um, so we use a similar equation to our chlorine dosage, but what we do is we're adding the desired residual plus the safety factor. Uh, and then we multiply that by, by the flow and our unit conversion. So a wastewater treatment plant, or here is our practice problem that we're gonna use, for, um, that I'm gonna go over with you guys. So the treatment plant has a two MGD flow and an average chlorine residual of 4.5 milligrams per liter after disinfection. And we wanna know what is the sulfur feed rate required to pop, properly dechlorinate the wastewater if a safety factor of three milligrams per liter is desired. So just like our previous problems, we're gonna have our givens first. So we have our chlorine dosage, um, our safety factor, and then the flow. We're gonna set up our problem. Um, and so our problem we have at the top, and then we just plug those uh, givens in. So um, our chlorine residual is gonna be added to our safety factor. Uh, we can keep our units outside of that addition. And then we have our uh, flow and multiplied by our conversion. Uh, we add the safety factor and the chlorine residual together and equal to 7.5 to simplify it. And then to solve, we're just gonna multiply across. Now the first part, we're gonna just cancel our units of our gallons. Um, and then we leave that M up, which signifies our millions, if you guys remember. So that again, our millions um, on the second form of the equation can cancel out with the PPM, which we carried over from the milligrams per liter um, and a PPM is equal to that. And then we just multiply across um, and our numeric value is 125. And we just add in our units that stay in. So it's gonna be pounds over day. If you guys wanna just take this in for a second to see how I did it, um, I'm going to, then we're gonna do a practice problem again. Okay, so here's our practice problem. 
and it reads, uh, another wastewater treatment plant with a three MGD flow and an average pouring residual of two milligrams per liter has been operating with a safety factor of one milligram per liter. What is the required sulfur feed rate needed for the desired dechlorination? So we'll leave this up for a second. And then we will have you guys uh, fill out the poll for the answer. And I'll leave this up for about a minute and a half. Okay, let's go ahead and put up the poll question and we'll have everyone put in their answers and then we can go over the answer. So the um, possible answers are 7.5 pounds a day, 50 milligrams per liter, 25 pounds a day, or 75 pounds a day. Closing the poll in three, two, one. Awesome. It looks like most of us got it correct. And we'll go over the solution right now. So uh, once you combine the safety factor and the corn residual, it's pretty simple. We just uh, add that together and then multiply it by our other terms. Um, cancel out our units um, and we just multiply across and we get 75 pounds a day. So I'll go ahead and leave this up for about 10 seconds. So if uh, you did get it correct, you can kind of see where you might have uh, made a mistake. All right, so now we're going to move on to some ozone disinfection. So ozone is a powerful oxidizing agent and destroys viruses more effectively than chlorine. Um, now, there aren't always a whole lot of ozone disinfection problems that I've seen in certification exams, uh, but certain things you might need to do is calculate the ozone demand, uh, which is done the same way as a chlorine demand. You'll probably be given a residual um, and a um, dosage and you'll subtract that residual from the dosage to get your demand. It's in the same way as chlorine. Uh, there's also a possibility of doing like a dosage problem. Uh, and here's one common example of that where you might have the gas flow rate and you would divide that by the liquid flow rate. Um, you would have those terms cancel out and then you would multiply that uh, by the concentration going into the flow uh, versus the concentration of ozone out of it. And so that gives you how much dosage is actually used in uh, the treatment of the wastewater. And uh, this presentation will be uh, later if you want to see this equation in case you guys come across any practice problems for those. There's also some math typically of 
associated with ultraviolet disinfection. Um, so here's some important figures and formulas to remember for that. Um, one important thing to understand is that the UV lamps typically produce a UV radiation with a wavelength of 254 nanometers. Um, and that's the wavelength that penetrates microorganisms and alters their DNA so that they can no longer reproduce. Um, some equations that you might see is trying to calculate the dosage. Um, you would typically be given a UV intensity and you multiply it by the retention time. Um, and this would give you uh, the units in millijoules over cubic centimeters. Um, this could also be done um, in uh, standard US standard units, which might be feet or inches, uh, but they do it as joules and watts uh, because that's um, the metric system that's typically used or the SI units. Um, and a watt multiplied times a second is going to equal a joule. So that's how we get those units on that one. Um, another example is you might need to uh, find out the volume per bank, which is going to be the width times the uh, water depth times the lamp arc length. And this will typically be given because it's not necessarily the length of the lamps and kind of depends on the different um, optical factors. Uh, so that would just be provided as a simple given. Um, or if it just says you might be told to assume that the lamp arc length is equal to the length of the lamp. Um, and that's often useful for finding the retention time. Uh, so you will have the channel volume divided by the flow rate, and that would give you a time in seconds. Um, so there's some typical equations that you might see used for uh, UV disinfection. Um, and then finally, we're going to do our last uh, poll question. Um, so this is the one I wanted you to write down the equation for. Um, so this is our last question, our last practice problem. So I'm going to read it out to you guys, and I'll give you guys a couple minutes to solve it, uh, and then we'll go over the example. So a wastewater treatment plant with a flow of 15 MGD has determined that their disinfection process has a chlorine demand of 4.3 milligrams per liter. Their MPDS permit requires that they maintain a chlorine residual of 1.5 milligrams per liter. What must the minimum solution strength of their chlorine solution as a percentage be if the maximum feed rate of their equipment is 475? And I left out that um, unit, but it should be pounds per day. Um, what is the most likely form? And then, uh, so we want to find out what the percentage should be if the maximum feed rate is 475 pounds per day. And then the second part of the question is, what is most likely the form of chlorine that the wastewater treatment plant will use? Uh, and that those answers will be given on the poll question. So first, let's go ahead and solve this problem. I'm going to leave it up for uh, about two or three minutes, and then we'll uh, have the poll question, and then, then we'll do our final poll question, and then I'll show the solution.
All right, let's go ahead and put up the uh, first poll questions and see how we uh, do. Um, so the possible answers are 6%, 75%, 66%, or 75 ppm. I'm going to close the poll in three, two, one. All right. So it looks like most of us got the correct answer. Um, we'll go over the solution after our second problem, though. So this next question is, what is the most likely form of chlorine that the wastewater treatment plant will use? And our possible uh, solutions are chlorine gas, liquid bleach, HTH powder, or chlorine ions. So go ahead and select which one, um, and that's gonna match whatever percentage we found. Pull in three, two, one. Okay, so most of us answered uh, chlorine gas. Um, the actual answer is HTH powder, um, and we'll go over why that is on this next slide. So, um, but first I want to point out that uh, one thing that you do need to calculate from the givens um, is our chlorine dosage. And if you remember, that's the demand plus the residual. So our chlorine dosage would be 4.3 plus 1.5. And then our other givens are 15 MGD and 475 pounds per day. So here's our solution. Um, so we're going to rearrange the equation so that our chlorine solution is isolated and it's gonna equal our feed rate divided by the dosage times the flow times our conversion factor. So we have 475 pounds a day and then we have that milligrams per liter that we talked about, our dosage. Um, so our, um, our residual plus our demand, um, we multiply that by the flow, 15 MGD and our 8.34 pounds per gallon. And this will result in um, all our units end up canceling out. Um, you know, you can see the pounds at the top, day at the bottom of this first term, um, you know, those will cancel out with the day for the MGD um, and the pounds um, on our conversion factor, gallons cancels out with our million gallons and the million cancels out with our milligrams per liter. So that equals 0 .6, uh, 0 0.655 or 66%. So the answer to that question is 66%. And if you remember from one of our first slides, uh, the available chlorine uh, for HCH powder is between 65 and 70%. Um, gas is typically considered at 100%, um, though that's actually not realistic in real life because not all of it will partition. And then um, liquid bleach is between 3 and 12%. So that is uh, the conclusion of our presentation. Um, so I guess now we'll check with um, uh, James, to see if there's any questions that came up. Uh, no questions, just a comment uh, as you were going through the last uh, the last problem. Uh, okay. So uh, if anybody has any questions, now's the time to throw them in.
we're waiting for any questions to come through, I know we're at um, our, our end time. So in case any of you have to jump off, um, we appreciate you attending our webinar today. Um, we will be emailing you all with a link to the slides and the recording. And we also ask that you complete our evaluation so you can let us know your thoughts on today's session and ways we can make you know future sessions um, on topics important to you. So you check back in if there are any questions. Any questions come up, James? Yes, uh, let's see. I've got something says, in the ozone equation, should it say off gas? Uh, you might want to go back to the ozone slide. Uh, yes, yeah, I'm sorry, that, that in on the concentration, so it should say um, on that last term, concentration of ozone off gas. So um, and I kind of just let that in instead of off. So this should be um, let me edit that real quick. So that's how it should read. So I, I, I deleted the in part of it. So is off gas one word? That's not a, a minus symbol in, in between off and gas, right? No, um, it's combining the two. Okay, it's a hyphen, hyphenated word, okay. Yes, it's a hyphen. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, that's not a subtraction sign. That's a hyphen. Uh, let's see. Um, how often does breakpoint happen, uh, was asked. So this is, I guess, in reference to your breakpoint math. Yeah, so that happens uh, anytime you treat uh, wastewater, it's always going to have the presence of ammonia so that nitrogen is in there. Um, it's going to occur whenever you add chlorine to um, ammonia containing water. So anytime you add it to wastewater, it's going to happen. Um, now, typically, uh, the actual break point where it starts to um, increase with free residual is usually uh, after about five milligrams per liter or so, but it's going to depend on the strength of the wastewater. The more nitrogen you have in the wastewater, the later uh, breakpoint will occur with your dosage. Um, you'll see that, like I said, you'll see that decrease once you have kind of a moldable ratio of chlorine and nitrogen one to one. Um, but after about five milligrams per liter or so, um, I think is the typical amount. Uh, you'll see that breakpoints occur and uh, your free residual will increase. All right, that's our last question. Okay, awesome. Uh, well, thank you for everyone for attending. Um, and you know, me and uh, James are both from Southwest Environmental. Uh, you're welcome to contact either of us. Uh, we do have our next uh, webinars plan, uh, you know, kind of roughly planned. But if there are any suggestions or topics anyone's interested in, um, we may be able to cover those in future webinars or add them to our other um, web already planned webinars that. Uh, we you know, if they fit in with them. Thank you so much, AJ, for sharing your expertise with us today. Um, and James, thank you for facilitating the Q&A. And thank you all for attending, and we hope to see you at a future EFCN event. Um, and if you want to drop any of those webinar ideas, um, you can include those in your evaluation responses. So thank you, and have a wonderful day.